what do I do in terms of registration at a secondary school? So all of these mechanisms are in place to seamlessly move after Thursday into our marking and into our results sometime within the new term leading on. So I thank you for this opportunity to present this short piece of information. Thank you, Mr. Sambucharan. So we now move to our Chief Education Officer, Mrs. Lisa Henry David, who will walk us through a bit more of the preparations that are happening beforehand to ensure that our schools are physically ready in addition to some other matters. Mrs. Henry David. Well, Nian Gasby Dolly, Minister of Education, our Permanent Secretary, Mrs. Lana Batiste Simmons, colleagues in, ed in education at the table here with me, members of the listening and viewing public. Good afternoon. So, following on from Mr. Sam Bucharan's presentation, I just want to reiterate the role of CXC in the, the conduct of the secondary entrance assessment. So the Caribbean Examinations Council is contracted by the Ministry of Education, Trinidad and Tobago, to provide technical and administrative services for the setting of the paper, the marking of the SEA paper, and the processing of the results of the three papers. As Mr. Sambutran would have indicated, the CXC would consult with the ministry and then it will appoint chief examiners for each subject area to assist in the construction of the question papers as well as to standardize the marking of the examinations. CXC would consult with representatives of the ministry to check and finalize the papers and these marking schemes and the general instructions for each subject. And uh, I would let the public know that this process took place virtually for 2021. With respect to administration of the exam, CXC would liaise with the ministry with respect to collating the papers, packing them, and dispatching these question papers to the Ministry of Education. The papers are packed strictly in accordance with the needs of individual centers. So as Mr. Sambutran would have indicated, no one in Trinidad um, has the individual papers at hand. They come prepackaged and they are delivered where they are picked up by the centre supervisors in the packages on the morning of the exam, and thus ensuring the integrity of the examination. With respect to marking of the exam, CXC conducts the script marking exercise under the leadership of CXC appointed examiners who Mr. Sam Boucheron would have indicated have traveled to Trinidad from Barbados and are now in quarantine. They have been granted the necessary approvals to so do. Further, CXC, in consultation with the ministry, would identify the markers and where there's training to be done, they provide that training. They may, and CXC would also make the physical arrangements for the space in which the marking takes place. As Mr. Sambutron have indicated, with respect to data processing, CXC maintains a computerized system for capturing the examination results. And this system is used to facilitate compilation of students' scores, which are then submitted to the ministry in rank order. And this usually happens um, four weeks after the completion of the marking exercise. And I would also use this opportunity to indicate that at the completion of the entire SEA process, CXC provides a report to the ministry on the administration of the exam, and the information provided is used to facilitate improvements for the ensuing year. I will now turn to the subject of deferral of the sitting of the SEA. The Ministry of Education is cognizant of the challenges that are experienced by our students who are scheduled to sit this exam in 2021. And having consulted with key stakeholders in education, a decision was taken to offer the option of deferral of the sitting of SEA from 2021 to 2022. In this regard, 
It was noted, and this information was provided to the schools and thus to the parents, that a request for a deferral was, did not guarantee an automatic approval for deferral. Parents were required to submit their request to their principals in writing and to state the reason that they were asking for that such a deferral. School administrators, in consultation with class teachers, reviewed the requests and made recommendations for such deferral, deferrals. The entire process would have been guided by the projected class size for 2022 and the possible resets in determining the number of the deferrals that could be accommodated. So, in, a, in other words, the physical space, because at some point we are going to go back to face-to-face -face education, the physical space is one of the main issues that would have determined whether a school could accept a child for deferral. Of course, there was an age, uh, um, children who would have been 15 or would be 15 before the 1st of September were not eligible for deferral because of legal requirements as stated in the Education Act. Principals would have submitted the applications to the district offices by 17th of May and the, what was submitted to the district offices included the reasons for the deferral and the school's recommendation. At the end of the exercise, a total of 183 applications were submitted, and of these, 176 were granted. Letters were then issued to parents informing them of the decision as to, uh, in other words, whether their deferral request was, uh, was acceded to or not. I also, I want to speak to the, the issue of curfew passes or permission for the ministry staff to work outside of the curfew hours. So the Ministry of Education, in the execution of duties related to the administration of 2021 examinations, has engaged the Commissioner of Police with respect to securing approval for the Ministry of Education staff involved in the packaging and transportation of exam scripts for SEA as well as for CAPE and CSEC as required. And we have gotten the assurance of the Commissioner of Police that they will facilitate these activities. We have also written to the Commissioner of Police advising him of the different categories of staff required for the administration of the SEA on the day of the exam. So, monitors, for example, will be given a letter that they can walk with to indicate that they are performing duties because they will be required to move between schools during the, on the day of the exam. Ladies and gentlemen, in terms of infrastructural readiness, in preparation for the SEA exam, and in light of the fact that school plant has been virtually unused for 15 months or so, the Ministry has continuously sought to keep school facilities operational. In this regard, our principals utilize the online school infrastructure management system known as SIMS, to report infrastructural issues, which are then scheduled for action by the, the Education Facilities Planning and Procurement Division. Over the past few months, in accordance with these reports, roof, ceiling, sewer, floor, water system, lighting and electrical repairs have been carried out. When works were halted due to COVID-19 restrictions, we would have appealed to the Ministry of Health and works would have recommenced around June the 10th and the Ministry has been given assurances by MTS and contractors 
that works will be completed by June 28th. All efforts have been made to ensure the safety of our students and staff as they engage in the examination process. I will say that there were two cases where we were advised that repairs would not be able to be carried out in time and arrangements have been made for students of those two schools to be comfortably accommodated at neighboring schools. Finally, with respect to the provision of meals on the day of SEA, as per usual practice, the Ministry has engaged the National Schools Dietary Services Limited to provide a snack for the 19,656 students scheduled to sit the SEA. These snacks will be distributed to the schools on the day of the exam, and I want to assure you that all safety protocols will be observed in the distribution and consumption of these snacks. Thank you. Matthew? Thank you, Mrs. Henry David. Now, if we are speaking about physical readiness and we're speaking about packages and papers for students, we have to ensure that our students are safe when they enter these compounds. To speak to the protocols that have been implemented to ensure that our students are safe, we have Dr. Amanda Solomon, House Officer at the Ministry of Education. Dr. Solomon? Hi, good day, and thank you, Matthew. Um, Honorable Minister Gatsby Dolly, Permanent Secretary Ms. Lenor T. Simmons, um, CEO and my fellow colleagues. Today I would like to walk you through what the Ministry of Education has been putting in place over the last couple of months to prepare for these very exams. The Ministry of Education has brought on board a team of medical professionals to prepare for, prevent and mitigate any possible cases or health concerns that arise in the school compounds. What has happened is we have one medical doctor and we have two nurses assigned to each of the districts across Trinidad and Tobago. Tobago has made their own arrangements, but we continue to be in communication with them to ensure that the standard is up to par across both um, Trinidad and Tobago. To date, at each in each district, the nurses have done in-person visits to each school and would have sought to complete a checklist of requirements for each school to be able to, to, be able to assess their readiness. It involves pre-entry protocols, entry protocols, on-site monitoring, and a protocol or plan for any incident that can occur on the school compound. The entry protocols would bar any person who does not meet the standard from entering the school compound and direct them to seek the appropriate medical attention or any um, assessment that would need to, be, need to be cleared before they can be officially allowed to enter the school compound. This is provided in the Ministry of Education's guidelines for um, the reopening of schools and all school supervisors and principals would have access to this document as they did in our preparations um, prior. Along with this, um, in terms of the SEA and CXC exams, for both exams, we have put in place a pre-entry protocol where the schools will be sanitized and the place will be set up for the exam and there will be no one allowed to enter the compound until the day of the exam. This would help to mitigate any possible contagion on the compound and would then have us only need to be concerned about the day of the particular exam. As it relates to SEA, we have for our students a list of screening questions that they would have to answer at the door. Parents would have to provide up-to-date contact information should something occur. The schools themselves have put in place measures where each school has a quarantine area or isolation area to be able to take any person that may be of concern. We also have a seating manifest in place where persons are uh, distanced appropriately head-to-head -head by six feet and the students would have a register to know who was assigned what seat and this would then be used in the event of, of any incident that occurs to be able to quickly and accurately um, carry out contact tracing as necessary. Um, each district with their two nurses 
has continued to form and build relationships with the team. The nurses have continued to support the schools and assist the schools to make sure that they can meet the standard for the students to be safely accommodated. Not only the students, but also the staff and auxiliary staff that may be on the compound. This has led to the mitigation and prevention of any outbreak in any of our schools. And we look forward to seeing how it, w it works out on the day of the exam because we have done our very best to make sure that all the preventative measures are in place. That said, each of the districts was, is in constant communication with the CMOH office. Now the CMOH office is responsible for the management of any cases that arise. This includes any persons that are assessed as being um, COVID-19 positive or needing to be on quarantine for any reason. The nurses are aware of these persons and these persons will not be allowed to enter the compound on the day of the examination. Um, we continue to support our students by having measures in place for them to be able to um, let us know when this happens so we can um, support them not only um, by um, uh, allowing them to be on a, on a list of persons to be notified for when they can next do the exam, but also we, we provide counseling, we work with the school support services to help these parents and, and students cope with this challenge. And we continue to try to prevent and mitigate any other concerns health related that may come up on the compound. Along with this, we have the sanitation stations, we have hand washing stations, each of these schools has a crisis management team who is alerted in the event of any situations that relate to health. Now this team contacts the, the Ministry of Education's health unit and we, along with the CMOH office, help to make a plan then towards getting the school then ready for um, operation as soon as possible. This involves the proper sanitation of the affected areas. It also involves the involvement of the CMOH office in terms of the persons that will be identified as contacts or persons of concern to be on the appropriate quarantine and also any persons that would be on quarantine and may affect their exams. We have measures in place that this can be reported to us so we will know and assist in the best way that we can. We have continued to support the schools in being ready they have um, several lines of defense in place and protocols to be followed and i can talk you through just what the protocols are should something um, occur on a school compound should any child or staff or member of the public who is within a school compound um, arrive and begin to display any viral or, or flu-like symptoms or covid 19 symptoms they are to be escorted to the isolation area this is done by a member of the crisis management team or a health and safety officer where appropriate. Um, still maintaining the COVID-19 protocols. The, if it's, if it's a, a student, in that case, the parent is immediately alerted to be able to transport this student to the nearest public health facility where they have to be assessed. Once they are assessed, we can then move forward to determine um, what needs to be done to the school. At the school level, the appropriate sanitation takes place um, whether it affected one classroom, two classrooms, the entire school. The CMOH gives us consult on each of these cases and is dealt on a case-by-case -case scenario for us to be able to know how to handle um, our, situ our, our situation. All necessary measures for prevention are in place. All necessary measures for should something occur on a school compound are in place. And the unit continues to follow up with any persons who would have had cases and we will do the same for any persons that would have cases in the future. Now that being said, the schools have all the necessary things to ensure that the persons who enter the compound are fit to and appropriate to be able to be on the compound um, at the time. The CMOH office is in constant communication with us and al will alarm us of any persons that have been identified that are our students or, or, or staff maybe of a, a MOE facility to be able to assist us in ensuring that the persons that are on the compound are supposed to be there and uh, there's, no, there's no added risk to the persons who come. Along with all the other measures in place as voiced by my colleagues, we continue to do our very best to ensure the health and the safety of everybody that would be around for these exams and we wish all the students the very best in the upcoming exams.
Thank you, Dr. Solomon. So we have had our physical preparedness. We've spoken to the COVID protocols that have been implemented at each school. And now I would like to hand back to Dr. The Honorable Nian Gatsby Dolly for an overview. And then we will be taking questions from there. Thank you, Matthew, and thank you to the technical officers of the Ministry of Education. And I hope the public has been apprised of our operational readiness for the SEA that is to be held on July the 1st, um, 2021. And uh, you should have a clearer view of what is involved in terms of the administration of this exam and the number of steps and the number of persons that are involved. I also hope at this time that you have a clear understanding of the safety protocols that have been implemented to ensure that these exams are carried out in safety. There's a dedicated Ministry of Education Health Unit, and you would have heard from Dr. Solomon, the head of that unit, and you would have heard about the school sanitization that um, is taking place, and all preparations are made for that, the entry protocols, the social distancing of the students, the mask wearing, the exam paper, um, they have also been sanitized upon arrival, they have been sanitized, and so we know that we will be able to hand out papers that um, have the benefit of that process. And also, we have done, as you would have heard from the DSS, we have done um, vaccination for some of these SEA personnel, and we do have another phase of vaccination that's coming up this weekend for those who have come on to the SEA examination team at this time. I want to remind the public as well that the Ministry has advised through our principals that the exam um, uniform requirement has been relaxed for 2021, understanding that some students would not have been in school for quite a while and are trying to mitigate against the need for parents to go out and buy fresh uniforms, in some cases just for um, one day or a couple of days. And so principals would have advised parents, and we did advertise on our Facebook and social media platforms, that students are allowed to wear um, branded items, um, school jerseys and so on, but this must be done with the guidance of the principals at the schools. In addition to that, the bookstores, this has been um, something that has come up for quite a few weeks, and so the bookstores have been open, the art stores, so that students are able to get the supplies that they need for their exams, and that has been open for a week now, and we are grateful that there has been no reason to reverse that decision. And I just want to close by wishing all of our students the very best. I want to recognize your hard work as well as the hard work of your parents, our teachers, our administrators in getting through this very challenging time and to assure you that the Ministry of Education will do and continue to do all that is necessary to have these most critical exams carried out so that our students have the best chance of success in an environment of safety. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Gatsby Dolly. Now we will be moving to questions, and we understand that all of our media houses are trying to represent the best interest of the public. However, we are operating under time constraints, so we're asking for each media house to take one question initially, and if time permits, we will take a second. Before we begin our questions, I'd just like to highlight that uh, outside of SEA, we do have CSEC and CAPE coming up, and for our private candidates for CXC examinations, they can visit our website to get their candidate numbers, centers, and timetables. And this information can be obtained at www.exams.moe.gov.tt. So we will now be moving to questions, and we begin with Priya Bihari from AZP News. Question, um, um, with Dr. Solomon, um, can you say um, whether the pupils would have to wear a mask while they write the exam, and, and like what would be the maximum number of students per classroom? Um, you know, given the constraints and and the protocols. Thank you very much. Student is required to wear a mask for the duration of the exam. The Ministry of Health guidelines have made a requirement that children eight years and over are to wear their masks. So yes, they would have to wear a mask for the duration of the exam. 
in terms of the, the, the class sizes, the classes have been outfitted to accommodate a six foot head to head distance and therefore it depends on the, the size of the class and therefore how many seats can be accommodated maintaining that distance and that will be done in a, 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 a assessment of each room. So I can't give you a number because each, each school is different. So as long as they maintain their six foot distance, the amount of students that would, out, that would fit in that um, classroom, that's how many will be accommodated in that classroom. And where um, necessary, accommodations have been made for the use of auditoriums and other school, school spaces to be able to meet the needs of the number of students that we have to have do the assessment. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Solomon. We now move to Annalisa Paul, Guardian Media Limited. And good afternoon to the Minister and to the panel. Um, I'm not sure who's going to take the question. Minister, there was a previous shortfall in terms of the numbers of persons required to invigilate this exam. And I know that that process was opened up to secondary school teachers for volunteer volunteers from that system. Um, I know that the, it was just mentioned in terms of figures that the requisite numbers have been gotten, but can you say if all of those persons have now come from within the Ministry of Education or, or are persons being taken from outside of that, the Ministry? And uh, secondly, in terms of the CX, um, CSEC exams that are currently ongoing, uh, has any student so far presented with COVID-19 symptoms or had to be taken out of exams or coming, coming into the exam, uh, possibly exposing others to the virus? Can you say that at this point in time, please? I'll take this um, with respect to students presenting with um, symptoms at this time. The ministry does not have any information that points to that. Um, so there's nothing at this time to report on that issue. With regards to the testers, um, these are usually volunteer teachers. We do have just over 6,000 primary school teachers and over 6,000 secondary school teachers. And the required number of testers for this exam would be just above 2,100. And so we have had, um, over the years, never ne reached the maximum number that are needed. However, the schools do make arrangements where necessary and where there are extended areas, that also reduces the amount. And so at this time, we are on track to have um, the required number of testers to be able to administer the exam and these have come from the primary and some of the secondary school teachers. Um, what has also assisted is the fact that teachers feel more comfortable in their schools at this time and we feel it's also um, for the students, those standard four students who would now be the standard five cohort writing the exams, they would have left um, the face-to-face -face environment in standard four and so to come into the school and see some familiar faces we think this also will be um, a help and a comfort for the students. Of course, the standard four and five teachers will not be involved as, as testers at their own schools because um, certainly we want to um, use the other pool of teachers to ensure that there's no issue in terms of integrity. And so um, that is where we are at this point. We are well on track to having the required number of testers for the examination. Thank you very much, Minister. We now move to Renessa Cutting, CCN TV6. Good afternoon. Now, um, indicate that there are safety protocols in place, but could we have a bit of a walkthrough, so to speak, as parent or parents are at, and given that there Ms. will be Cutting. some screening being done, I'm imagining that this could probably. Miss Cutting, your it's audio the same cuts topic off is at one big, point. Just... Can you repeat your question, please? Okay. Fire. Uh, Ms. Cutting, we will have to come back to you as we work out the, the student and their audio difficulties. We now move to Rihanna McKenzie, Newsday Newspapers. Good afternoon, everyone. Rihanna McKenzie here from Newsday. I, uh, my question is, I know you mentioned the vaccination rollout for invigilators. Uh, just to clarify, uh, can you give an idea of how many of the identified invigilators have been vaccinated thus far? Thank you. 
if you're speaking about the testers and those who have come from the teaching pool, it should be just about 1,100 or just them thereabouts based on those who had identified themselves to be working for the SE at the time of that rollout. So the additional 500 will be applied to those who have come on board with regards to volunteering for administration of the SE exam. Thank you, Minister. We will now try again with Renessa Cutting. Hi, good afternoon. Yes, Renessa, we hear you now. Okay, great. Um, I said the ministry did indicate that there will be safety protocols in place, but could we have a bit of a walkthrough as to exactly what will transpire when the student shows up at the gate with their parent or parents? Um, what is the actual? What are the actual procedures at that point? And I'm thinking um, this may cause a bit of a queue at the gate. So I'd like to know also what what time does the ministry advise students to turn up for the exam? Thank you, Ms. Cutting. I will pass this question over to Dr. Solomon. Hi, and thank you for your question, Ms. Cutting. Um, we are asking parents to be reasonable and be present at least an hour before the exam. We understand that we would not want to encourage congregation outside of the school um, by students or by parents. Once um, a parent arrives with their child, they would be shuttled to the entry, entry point of the school. Here, they would have temperature checks that will be recorded. The parents' contact information will also be verified. We are also asking them to um, answer some screening questions that would give us an idea of what kind of history they may have in terms of any personal risk of being on the compound. And we encourage parents to prepare children for this process. Should they not meet the um, entry protocols, they will be turned away from being able to do the exam. We encourage you to ensure these children um, are prepared and have their masks, that they have their own personal hand sanitizer, and any other, any other hygiene, the, um, accessories that you may think necessary for your own their own personal use um, once they are in the school compound they would have to follow um, a pathway to their classroom their assigned seat like i mentioned before we have a seating manifest so they'll be assigned a particular seat and once they are in for the exam the teacher will be present as well to conduct the exam there'll be six there'll be a six foot distance in place and should they have to use the bathroom or anything, they, they would, of course, have to inform the, the examiner, just as for any, any other conducting, any other exam that, that, would, that would have been conducted. And they would, they would be assisted in an appropriate manner to the bathroom or to any, any other place that they need to be. Like I said before, should any incident arrive where a child is in need of being in the isolation area, we have that protocol in place as well. But it is nothing... Um, that should encourage a pew, and we do not encourage persons to congregate outside or inside of the school compound at any time. Once a child completes the exam, we are asking parents to please be prompt to come and have your child taken home um, so that we do not have the congregation of the students. We know it's been a while since they've seen each other, and they, it, it, may, it may lead to them wanting to, to, to gather. And we know at this time that we would not want them to do so on the school compound and or outside the school compound. So we ask that you would cooperate with the, the security staff, the teaching staff, to have them operate in a manner that is appropriate and also to see that they can get into the school safely and get back to you safely. Thank you, Dr. Solomon. We move to Leah Sorias, Express Newspaper. Good afternoon, Minister and other members of the panel. My question is, uh, I'm trying to get an idea of where students will be during the 30-minute break. Um, are they to remain in their seats in the classroom or will be allowed outside? Depending on the makeup of the school, students can be allowed outside. In super, of course, the importance is always the supervision to ensure that there is no congregation. So students can be allowed, and I can say in the guidelines that are sent out, we do allow students to have their lunches and so on in the classroom. That is based on how schools are operating um, between February and April. And so it, different schools are allowed to let their students come outside, take a stretch, but certainly 
in groups supervised so that there's no congregation, have their snack and so on. So that is allowed and the school can certainly use that group method so that the students get a chance to stretch their legs and so on. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. We move to Rai Rekomas, 101.101 FM. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, Rai Rekomas from 103.1 FM. I just have a question regarding the marking process uh, with CXC being involved. Could you tell me how, if at all, does it differ from marking process that would have been used in SEAs gone by? Thank you. I'll turn it over to Mr. Sambucharan, but just to say that um, CXC has been involved in the process for quite a few years, and so I'll allow Mr. Sambucharan to elaborate on that. Um, the marking process in previous years is really no different from this year. Last year when we did this exercise under similar conditions, CXC was able to manage um, you know, their marking centers by suitably making sure that their markers were separated um, into smaller, sp into larger spaces to facilitate the social distancing, etc. So the marking process is no different. Each script will be marked by multiple markers marking different sections of a people. And each table of markers is a small number, just around six is managed by a table leader that oversees all of these um, marks subscribed to each score, to, to each script. Now, once that is shuttled through one category of items and it is boxed over to another room whereby the other, the, the other items are so marked. So it continues along that round table kind of process. Um, unlike previous years, the creative writing paper, however, has adopted for this year the uh, item being focused on any one type of writing. And for this year, narrative writing for creative writing will be the focus that the students will be um, engaged in. Um, again, similar to previous years, the particular creative writing piece is marked by two different markers, each ascribing a mark from 1 to 10, and that is combined over two markers, and you get the composite score for a creative writing paper. Once the paper for mathematics and English language arts go through its wrong robin exercise, that mark is tabulated on the cover of each script. Those scripts are moved over to the data capture processing, and that those marks are harnessed there and processed further. Off-site for CXC, at, um, they do that at Barbados, managed there, processed, and then uploaded to the online registration system. So uh, to answer your question, we have very little deviation from years previous. Thank you, Mr. Sam Bucharan. Okay, we have covered all of the media houses. With our first question, we want to hand back to Minister of Education, Dr. The Honorable Nian Gatsby Dolly, for a small announcement before we move to close. A student is displaying symptoms and cannot do the exam on the D. July 1st, and this applies to the SE, or if they are in quarantine and therefore cannot be allowed onto the school compound, the makeup date for the SE exam is July the 21st. So parents would have to be in contact with the principals and indicate the circumstances so that students can be accommodated for the makeup exam for the SE. For the CXE, there is not a makeup exam in the same sitting, and therefore, if a student is similarly um, circumstanced, they have their primary contact, they cannot come to the compound, or they, uh, they do contract the, the virus, then they would have to do the exam at the next available sitting, which may be either in January or in June, depending on the subject. So I just wanted to add that so that parents are, and teachers are very clear about what will happen in those circumstances. 
All right, Minister, we have one media house uh, that we did not cover. Uh, coincidentally, that is TTT. Uh, we have Sunil Lala. Good afternoon. Actually, uh, that was the question <laughs> that the minister um, just just answered my question there. But uh, just to, to move on to that, I, if a, a student um, actually comes up with symptoms and they are to be transferred to the isolation unit, would they then be able to write the exam in there or are they just in isolation? No, they would just be in isolation. We'd have to just remove them from the exam. In some cases, depending if there is, there may be a possibility to move to a separate room, but that all depends on if there's a tester available and that, that type of thing. So chances are that if a student begins to display symptoms in the middle of an exam, they may not be able to finish that exam. Thank you, Minister. We have at this time, unfortunately, run out of time. We understand that there are many questions that may still uh, be coming from the public or media houses. We advise that the guidelines for the operating of schools is online available at the ministry's website, moe.gov.tt, and all of the information on what will be happening on SEA Day and during the CSEC and CAPE exams are available. I want to reiterate that for private candidates, you can access all of your exam information at exams.moe.gov.tt. Further updates will be shared on the Ministry's social media and website as the week progresses and if there's anything that the Ministry needs to share. We thank you for joining the Ministry of Education this afternoon and we look forward to appraising you as time passes if there's anything additional that you need to know. Have a good afternoon.